Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphones Show, and today we're going to take a look at the brand new Focal Utopia SKU for 2020. Uh, I don't think the headphone has changed at all, it's just what it comes with in the packaging and all that stuff. While I'm unboxing this, I'm going to talk a little bit about the significance of different test tracks and different recordings on your evaluation of headphones and whether or not you're going to like something. Uh, because I think that's one of the things that is often missed when we talk about, you know, one headphone is really good or another headphone is maybe not quite as good. There's definitely room for preference as well, but I want to leave that aside and just talk about, you know, the difference in the recordings themselves and how that can influence our opinion on whether or not we like a headphone. So let's take a look at the brand new 2020 SKU for the Focal Utopia. This is the stand, it doesn't come with that. I'm just gonna move this over here. So first of all, this is the large black box that it comes in, and this doesn't look like anything all that new, but when I take it out of the box, very slowly, that's fun. We'll see that it comes in, yes, the Focal case that everybody knows for the newer Focal headphones. The old one, I believe, did not come with this case. And I think the old one also, it, it came in a large box like this, but the box itself was sort of the case and you didn't have this really you know, portable carry case that you could, you know, put it in. Whereas a lot of the newer Focal headphones did come with uh, one of these. Uh, and then it also comes with, yes, the booklet that the new Stelia comes with. I'm just gonna put this away. Can you guys see me still? <laughs> I wonder what happened to the focus with the camera there. So the reason why I think it's important to consider the test tracks that are being used when you are reading a review of a headphone or maybe you're watching one of my videos is not everybody is gonna be using the same test tracks. So for starters, we are gonna we all have different music preferences and we're gonna be listening to different music when we're trying this stuff out generally. I mean, there's, I definitely share my test tracks with other people and say, okay, this is what I'm listening for with this one, but not everybody's gonna be doing that. And I've actually seen a number of reviews or evaluations of the same headphone, one of, one of which says the soundstage is really narrow and tight and intimate, whereas the other one says that the soundstage is really spacious and open. One of these has to be wrong, but I think in some cases the reality is that the person who said that the, the soundstage was really tight and intimate, uh, they just weren't listening to tracks that fully took advantage of the, of the soundstage that the headphone has. So maybe they're not using recordings that fully reveal the soundstage of the headphone. Of course, it's also possible that one person doesn't have the same frame of reference that the other person does when comparing, you know, soundstages. So that also accounts for, you know, one of the differences. But I'm often reminded that people's opinions are formed by the recordings that they're listening to with the headphones that they're evaluating. And I've definitely heard a lot of tracks where everything is just a little bit more intimate and towards me. And so that's why, you know, for evaluating soundstage, I often recommend something like Yoshi Horikawa's Letter or Bubbles or one of those, you know, more soundstage oriented uh, tracks uh, because you really do get a sense of, well, not just soundstage, but also like the placement of everything. So I find that to be useful for something like soundstage, but I think it's also important to consider the difference in the recording itself, let's just hold that thought while we take this out of the packaging. This is of course where you get the documentation and all the cables and all the stuff. The Utopia actually comes with this cable. Now, I've not been a fan of Focal's cables in general. I find them to be a little bit on the stiff side, like these newer ones. But I do gotta say that these cables are an improvement on weight over the previous Utopia cable, which was very heavy. Uh, and this one, it's not, it's not as heavy. Uh, keep in mind though, the Utopia does use the Lemo connectors here. And I, I actually do like the way that they work, but this also means that they're fairly expensive, apparently. So getting an aftermarket cable for the Utopia was maybe not quite all that much fun. <laughs> uh, and then of course this is using the, this is the four pin balance termination for this cable. In here you have all the documentation, which should have the manual. Yeah, all this good stuff. User guide. I mean, it's, it's headphones, I don't, <laughs> put it on your head. I don't know how difficult that's gonna be. Maybe for some people. There's a beryllium safety thing in here. That's kind of fun. Just gonna put this back in here. All right, so that's what you get in here. I think oftentimes when you buy a new headphone and you're listening to you know all of your different music and you know maybe you have test tracks, maybe you don't, but you're going through all your different music and eventually you might come to something that doesn't really sound all that good on your new headphones. And I think that's when it's important to ask this question of, is it the headphones that's at fault here or is it the track itself? Is it the recording itself? Because remember that while there might be an ideal way to record something and maybe in the future we'll get you know, nothing but really good recordings, uh, 
there's definitely a lot of music out there that hasn't been all that well recorded. But then also there are just different ways of recording things. So for example, how far away the microphone is from the singer, uh, you know, how it's mixed, how it's mastered, all these different factors play a role in how something ultimately ends up sounding. And there's definitely tracks that just don't sound as good on certain types of equipment. And the question is, is the equipment at fault? or is it reference and there's something wrong with the track or there's something wrong with the recording. And I think you have to kind of bite the bullet on one or the other, but that's also why I think it's important for reviewers like myself to have a you know, specific list of test tracks that we go through so we have that frame of reference to, to know, okay, this is how this sounds on other headphones. One of the examples that I like to give is, you know, the Focal Utopia for black metal. It doesn't sound very good. Um, and that's, there's a lot of you know, music like you know, metal in general that doesn't sound as good on certain types of headphones like you know, the HD800 and HD800S for example, they have that you know, 6K Hertz peak there and it makes certain types of tones sound not all that good. And I think one of the things that we may have to start being okay with is just recognizing the fact that we are listening to a poorly recorded track through really revealing headphones, right? And there's a lot of stuff where once it becomes you reveal once the recording gets put under the kind of microscope that something like the Focal Utopia will will do, uh, suddenly certain parts of it just don't sound very good. You'll notice things in the recording that you didn't realize were there before and it turns out that that doesn't actually sound all that good. Let's just pause on that again and open up this. Ooh, we got these little protective things on the, uh, on the zippers. Just remove that. All right, let's just take this out of the carry case. I love that they included this. It was, it's about time. And here we have the Focal Utopia in all of its glory. This is still as impeccably well built as I was used to from the previous one that I evaluated. Again, from my understanding, nothing has changed. This is the same excellent headphone that it's always been. It just comes in a new package. It's just as comfortable as it's always been. It's fantastic. It's a little bit heavy. Let me just put this here for now. It also comes with the shorter cable here, also with the uh, Lemo connectors. And this cable, I think there's actually, yeah, this is a 3.5 millimeter termination and then get a quarter inch jack here as well. So I'm just gonna put that there. Put this stand over here, put the Utopia on the stand. We might want there to be a standard and have all the recordings be done the same way and done well, but the reality is that, you know, we listen to music that is recorded in a wide range of styles. And at a certain point, I think us as headphone enthusiasts and audio enthusiasts in general, we just have to recognize that those recordings that might not sound all that great, you know, for the way that they're mastered or mixed or whatever, and just bite the bullet on that and say, okay, too, too bad for those recordings. You know, the headphones, they're not the problem. It's, we're not gonna be you know, specifically getting less revealing headphones so that we're gonna be able to handle you know, this one recording that doesn't really do all that well. I think eventually we need to just say, okay, well, this is just how this recording sounds on headphones that I like. And that's not to say that you know, a wide range of recordings won't reveal flaws in headphones either. So if we imagine that a given headphone sounds particularly bad on a certain percentage of recordings, uh, that only matters if I know that those recordings are handled very well on other headphones. And so I think having a range of different recordings can reveal to you that there is an issue with headphones. But you have to also know that those recordings are not problematic on their own. You have to know that you know, the recording itself isn't the thing that is throwing off your, your experience. And so what I wanna leave you guys with is the notion of putting together a series of test tracks to make sure that you know that when you're buying a new headphone that you're evaluating it on recordings that you know are good, that you know uh, aren't going to be the, uh, the problem in whatever you're listening to. Uh, so that you know the, your, your impressions of the headphone, of the equipment itself, aren't dramatically affected by it being a poor recording. And this might mean that it's not the type of music that you would normally listen to. I think there are trends for, you know, brighter headphones being a little bit more fatiguing for poorly recorded music and warmer, darker headphones being a little bit more forgiving. Um, but if you have a sense of what those recordings should sound like and you have a good list of them, it becomes way easier to make an assessment on whether or not you like the headphones or whether or not the headphones are gonna be good. And if anybody's wondering, the Focal Utopia is one of the most revealing headphones you could possibly buy. This is one of the most detailed dynamic driver headphones out there. Yes, it's very expensive, but this is something where this subject comes up a lot. You know, people listen to a certain type of music with it and say, oh, it's fatiguing, not realizing that 
maybe it's something wrong with the recording, or maybe you know it's uh, you're listening to music where you didn't know that that was there in the recording because you hadn't listened to it on headphones that were as revealing as the Utopia. So to once again borrow an analogy from a friend of mine, if you're looking through a window and you can see an image there through the window, how clear the, the window is is going to show you, you know, more detail in the image. It's gonna reveal more detail in the image and sometimes that's not a particularly nice image. I think we can all imagine other times in our lives when not seeing something is preferable to seeing it. But that's basically the idea. Obviously there's going to be a little bit of room for preference in all of this, but I still think it's important to try and clear up a little bit of that confusion that exists as a result of people just listening to different reference tracks. People just throwing headphones on and listening to the music that they would normally listen to, that on its own is another key component in you know the reason why impressions differ so dramatically, the reason why impressions differ to the degree that they do. And that's everything from the technical stuff like soundstage to you know frequency response and tonality, where something is fatiguing or glaring. So you know if you see a review that's being published on headphones that you have, and you see a number of different test tracks that have been used, try listening to those tracks and see if you can pick up on some of the same things because that might go a certain distance to understanding where this person was coming from. And to that end, it's one of the reasons why uh, I'm going to start publishing my test tracks. Uh, because again, that question of is, it, is there a problem with the headphones or is it just revealing the way that this recording sounds with good equipment and the recording itself is garbage, right? That's the problem that we end up needing to figure out here. And that should all be published on headphones.com. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. And this should also show up in uh, you know, future reviews as well that I do. But anyways, uh, that does it for this video of the new Utopia. Again, if you guys were considering buying a, a brand new Utopia in 2020, this is what it comes with. Uh, these are the cables, all the case and everything. So it's nice that Focal has updated this SKU with you know, stuff that exists for the rest of their headphones as well. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.